Chapter Nine of Eoli. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Vera Unreal. Eoli by Alexander Kinglake. Chapter Nine: The Sanctuary. I crossed the plain of Estrilon and entered among the hills of beautiful Galilee. It was at sunset that my path brought me sharply round into the gorge of a little valley and close upon a grey mass of dwellings that lay happily nestled in the lap of the mountain. There was one only shining point still touched with the light of the sun, who had set for all besides. A brave sign to this, to holy Sharif, and the rest of my Muslim men, for the one glittering summit was the head of a minaret, and the rest of a seeming village that had veiled itself so meekly under the shades of evening was Christian Nazareth. Within the precincts of the Latin convent in which I was quartered, there stands the great Catholic church which encloses the sanctuary, the dwelling of the Blessed Virgin. This is a grotto of about ten feet either way, forming a little chapel or recess, to which you descend by steps. It is decorated with splendour. On the left hand, a column of granite hangs from the top of the grotto to within a few feet of the ground. Immediately beneath it is another column of the same size, which rises from the ground as if to meet the one above, but between this and the suspended pillar there is an interval of more than a foot. These fragments once formed a single column, against which the angel leant when he spoke and taught to Mary the mystery of her awful blessedness. Hard by, near the altar, the Holy Virgin was kneeling. I had been journeying, cheerily indeed, for the voices of my followers were ever within my hearing, but yet, as it were, in solitude, for I had no comrade to wet the edge of my reason or wake me from my noonday dreams. I was left all alone to be taught and swayed by the beautiful circumstances of Palestine travelling, by the clime and the land and the name of the land with all its mighty import by the glittering freshness of the sward, and the bounding masses of flowers that furnished my sumptuous pathway, by the bracing and fragrant air that seemed to poise me in my saddle, and to lift me along as a planet pointed to glide through space. And the end of my journey was Nazareth, the home of the Blessed Virgin, and the first dawn of my manhood, the old painters of Italy had taught me their dangerous worship of a beauty that is more than mortal, but those images all seemed shadowy now, and floated before me so dimly, the one overcasting the other, that they left me no one sweet idol on which I could look, and look again and say, Mari mia! Yet they left me more than an idol, they left me, for to them I am wont to trace it, a faint apprehension of beauty not compassed with lines and shadows. They touch me, forgive, proud Mary of Anjou. They touch me with a faith and loveliness transcending mortal shapes. I came to Nazareth, and was led from the convent to the sanctuary. Long fasting will sometimes heat my brain and draw me away out of the world. Will disturb my judgment, confuse my notions of right and wrong, and weaken my power of choosing the right. I had fasted perhaps too long, for I was fevered with the zeal of an insane devotion to the heavenly queen of Christendom. But I knew the feebleness of this gentle melody, and knew how easy my watchful reason, if ever so slightly provoked, would drag me back to life. 
let there but come one chilling breath of the outer world and all this loving piety would cower and fly before the sound of my own bitter laugh and so as i went i trod tenderly not looking to right nor to the left but bending my eyes to the ground the attending friar served me well he led me down quietly and all but silently to the virgin's home the mystic air was so burnt with the consuming flames of the altar and so laden with incense that my chest laboured strongly and heaved with luscious pain there there with beating heart the virgin knelt and listened i strived to grasp and hold with my riveted eyes some one of the faint madonnas but of all the heaven-lit faces imagined my men there was none that would abide with me in this the very sanctuary impatient of vacancy i grew madly strong against nature and if by some awful spell some impious right i could o oh, most sweet religion that bid me fear god and be pious yet not cease from living religion and gracious custom commanded me that i fall down loyally and kiss the rock that blessed mary pressed with a half consciousness with a semblance of a thrilling hope that i was plunging deep deep into my first knowledge of the most holy mystery or of some new rapturous and daring sin i knelt and bowed down my face till i met the smooth rock with my lips one moment one moment my heart was an old pagan demon within me woke up and fiercely bounded my bosom was lifted and swung as though i had touched a warm rope one moment one more and then the fever had left me i rose from my knees i felt hopelessly sane the mere world reappeared my good old monk was there dangling his key with listless patience and thus he guided me from the church and talked of the refectory and the coming repast i listened to his words with some attention and pleasure End of chapter nine